Hi, I'm Ken Molesky with Central Electric Cooperative and welcome to Ken's Kilowatt Corner. Today we're going to talk about the most efficient heating and cooling system that you can put in your home, a heat pump. Why is it so efficient? Because it really doesn't make heating or cooling. All it does is move it from the outside to the in and vice versa. In the winter time, it takes heat that's trapped in cold air and takes it inside to the house to your indoor unit called an A-coil. In the summertime, the reverse happens. The heat and humidity in your home is extracted and the humidity goes out in the form of water in a drain pipe and the heat that's in your home is delivered outside back into the environment instead of you having to deal with it. So why is the heat pump so efficient? Is because to do all this, the only energy we need is the power to run a compressor almost the same energy that you need to run a refrigerator. And other than that, the heat pump will continue to do its job in the winter time down to temperatures of about 30 to 35 degrees outside air temperature. After that, the heat pump can continue to make heat down to absolute zero, which is minus 400. But the reason why you put a heating and cooling system in your home is not for energy efficiency first and foremost, but for comfort. In order for that to be comfortable at temperatures below 30 degrees outside air, we then use an, an indoor unit uh, electric resistance strip elements, which is located inside the furnace, which we're going to see here in a minute. But again, the heat pump, talking about efficiencies, is about 200% efficient. And what does that mean? Well, for dollars and cents uh, reasons, if you give the electric man a dollar, he will give you two dollars worth of heat. And let's contrast that with oil, which if you give the oil man a dollar, he'll give you 80 cents of heat. And the propane man, again, give him a dollar and he will give you 90 cents of heat, similar with natural gas. So you can see it's a good buy to use an electric heat pump. Yeah. And now let's take a, a little trip inside and see the other part of this unit, the indoor unit. Hi, now that we're inside, this is the other section. It's a two-part system with a heat pump, the indoor unit. Looks much like a regular furnace that you'd see in most homes. This one is an electric furnace, and the major components uh, that help this system to deliver the heat to all the rooms of the home comprises of four sections, the A-coil, the, which delivers the heating, the air handler that is more or less the blower, the strip coils which is going to add the additional heat that when the heat pump can't keep up with the needs of the home to keep you comfortable, and a filter to keep everything nice and clean. You got to remember one thing about heat pumps. We must have air delivered through the ductwork system at the registers at temperatures above 90 degrees, which is the temperature of our skin. The heat pump will do that to outdoor temperatures above 30 degrees. When it gets below 30, the delivery at the registers is going to come in the range of 80 to 85 degrees, which will feel uncomfortable. And that's where we're going to talk about our strip coils to add that additional heat. But let's go over all those four parts that, so you get an understanding of how this indoor unit system works. The air handler shown here is where the heating and cooling is distributed over the ductwork system and most people know this part of the uh, indoor unit as a blower. Okay this is the A coil of the heat pump uh, behind the metal cabinet and you can see the refrigerant lines coming from the outdoor unit leading into that area. The A coil is where the heat or the cooling is delivered from the outside unit and distributed by the air handler. Located on top of the furnace near the plenum and the ductwork is what I would call the strip coils which are behind the uh, metal cabinet and these act as toaster elements in your toaster to do your bagels or toast. Uh, wires inside here get red hot and they add the additional heat when the outside unit cannot deliver enough uh, temperature to keep you comfortable. And the last part of the unit is the filter which filters the air flow through the unit and the most important thing is to check this section once a month to make sure it's clean. Notice the blue down arrow that says airflow. Always replace the 
filter with the arrow pointing in the direction that the air is flowing through the system. Ductwork system, how important it is to a heat pump and to really any forced air system. What you want to do to check your system to make sure that you're not getting any leaks and losing that heating and cooling is to check important areas on your furnace and ductwork system where connections are made. Most important one to start is right here on the top of the furnace where your plenum comes in and hooks up to the electric furnace. Make sure that this is sealed properly. What we have on this unit have used is a duct sealing tape. I have some of that right here. This duct sealing tape actually peels off and can be applied right there. Another form of duct sealing would be mastic. It comes in a can. The mastic looks like a wheat colored paste that you can brush on with a just a standard paint brush to make sure that these joints anywhere along the ductwork system within the home have no leaks uh, for heating and cooling. Go ahead. Now we're in another area of the home, the bedroom, and we're going to talk about the most important part of your heat pump system and that's the ductwork. The unit that sits outside, if it's sized right, anybody's unit's going to work fine. Same with the indoor unit. But the ductwork is the delivery system of the home, and that should be measured and calculated correctly by a, a qualified heating and cooling contractor. Uh, the most important thing you've got to remember about your ductwork is you have to have a supply in every room, which is where the heat comes out and cooling comes out, and you must have returns, especially in bedroom areas such as this. This is the supply register in the bedroom. This is where the heating and cooling comes out. Again, in the heating side, you remember that the delivery temperatures from the heat pump system has to be above 90 at this point so that you feel comfortable in the heating season. This is the high wall cold air return, probably the most important part of any forced air heating and cooling system. Why it's important is that if you don't have a cold air return in each bedroom in the air conditioning mode, you will not be able to make those bedrooms comfortable because this is where the humidity and heat is drawn back to the furnace to be removed uh, in the summertime. And the most important thing that you want to remember is that you do not want to block the register which is behind me with furniture which would cause the air distribution delivery system not to function as it was designed. And another important thing to remember for proper airflow in your home is some rooms that may not be used, such as this room, uh, those doors should remain open because the moment you go and close this door, you've now unbalanced the air flows of your system and you might find that other areas of the home might not be as comfortable as they should be. And that's our heat pump system. Now you've seen everything you need to know about a heat pump, the most energy efficient heating and cooling machine all in one that you can put in your home. And right now they're running some great energy rebates from the federal government and state on heat pump systems. So the next time you're considering replacing your heating and cooling system, give the heat pump system a thought. Call us at 800-521-0570 to learn more or visit us on the web at www.central.coop. This is Ken Molesky and this is Ken's Kilowatt Corner.